Okay, so, you know, maybe a little bit of off script from the, the questions we talked about, but can you walk through that process of there's a patient in the hospital and now there's a patient at home? How does that sort of transition happen? How are we deciding who's going um, to be served at home and who's going to do the care? Yeah, so right now there, there are a couple of technical structural components that have been put in place through the CMS waiver, which is really the dryer that has basically created a financial foundation for a lot of organizations to really invest in this. Because prior to the waiver, the only way hospital at home made sense is if you were under full cap risk, because you're not getting paid for those patients. So if you were avoiding a hospital admission and you maintain risk, it worked. The waiver essentially brought parity. And we're now, with the extension of the waiver, we'll have had over four years of reimbursement. Um, it looks very likely that it will extend again. There's a proposal out there for a five-year extension right now. Um, but what this is going to, what, what it's done is it's created a mechanism that CMS and, and Medicare patients are being paid for at parity if they go in through two dimensions. They, they either come in, they're at the emergency department, and then they can be directly admitted to the hospital at home, or they're in an inpatient unit and they're transferred into the hospital at home. So it's outside of that. Again, if we're not talking about CMS commercial plans, you can have different structures. There are some, but most are tended to kind of follow that CMS structure, that CMS guideline. And the, how it gets, how a patient gets uh, put in there is really a clinical decision-making effort for the attending physician, the ED attending, the hospitalist, the nursing team. And uh, with, with maybe without, I know we've talked a little bit about this, but that is also the biggest stumbling block to growth of these programs, right? It's it is hard to change people's mindsets. And we go back to what we were just talking about with the definition. A lot of clinicians know exactly what home health is and home care is, and they know it is not a proxy or a replacement for the acute level care that that patient is going to need. And so a big issue, you see a lot of these hospital at home programs operating at just tiny, tiny volumes, you know, one or two patients a month, right? ABC of less than one, you average daily census of less than one on average. And it's because they haven't done the process, the change management, they haven't educated people, they haven't, or even maybe they haven't built a care model that is appropriate to take care of patients that the clinicians really believe and support. So the ones that do it really well, it is just another option in the, where should this patient be admitted? I am the clinician, I know their needs, I've assessed them, the ED attending, and I'm gonna decide, should they go to the floor? Do they have certain needs that are only available there versus into a home unit versus discharge or observation status? Again, it's just, one more arrow in the quiver, if you will. Thank you for joining us today on Elevate Care. If you found this episode valuable, please consider sharing it with a colleague and subscribing to our show on your favorite podcast platform. You can learn more about this episode and our show on our website at amnhealthcare.com and follow us on social media to stay updated on new episodes and the ever-changing world of healthcare.